And a very special round table tonight, too, because I have very, two very distinguished people in the world of popular music. Michael Jackson, welcome for the first time to the round table. Hi. I'm doing good. I saw you, of course, on Top of the Pops last night. I was with you on Top of the Pops <laughs> last night. You're in the midst of a, a big world tour now, right? That's true, yeah. i doing it a lot of different dates in Switzerland and Paris. How far into the tour are you? When you started, actually. We're two weeks into it. And you all geared up. you got to pace yourself or something like that. Yes, we've been so busy. Yeah, we have for the day. I'm going to find out about some of the things that you've been doing. I'm glad you're able to make along to the program. And in terms of, of global popularity, I suppose the Jacksons are only eclipsed by my next guest's old band, George Harrison. Welcome. Good evening, kid. Hi. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. And you've had a busy time, too, because you've just flown in from... Uh, Rio. Rio. By the sea. The only start in Rio. Rio. <laughs> Jackson, I'll go to you first and ask your reaction to that. I like the guitars on that. It's uh, very strong. I like the guitars on the, uh, the way you play the film. Uh, yeah, it's good. Um, dark records. I like that a lot. Really. I, mean, I think it gets your attention in the beginning. Right. I thought the rest of the was, it was very pleasant. <laughs> Alan B is a great guitar player. Yeah, I like that too. And in America, that's at number 10. And George Harrison, you expressed interest in that record before the program. Yeah, I think she's very nice. She looks nice, too. She sings so good, and the, the production is really good. Ted Templeman, one of one of those um, producers. What about you, Michael? Hard to do a lot. I've heard it lots of times. And, I guess so, yeah. I could. And I even had a beautiful melody. I'm sure she's a part of it. <laughs> Melodies is, is, is obviously uh, these days a very important part yeah. of your your music. I've noticed that the last couple of things that have been released have, have had a very a strong melody line that it was not maybe so obvious in the earlier records that, that, that you released. Uh, that's true for the singles, but um, for the other stuff, I mean, I think melodies are always important. I mean, especially on some of the the old Beatles things, American melodies are beautiful. I mean, that's, that's what I think they can stay around for. So. Yeah, that's why I like melodies, too. Really? Uh, the thing that puts me off a lot of pop music is the way it just, uh, you know, you can't distinguish what the tune's that's supposed right. to be. Actually, I disagree. I think the Jacksons had a lot of melodies. Remember the first big hit that I ever heard oh, was, I can't forget it anyway. Yeah, it is I mean, if you just hum, uh, your turn to be a fool on the hill. I mean, the melody is so pretty, you don't... I mean, the lyrics are beautiful, too, but... I mean, you know, well, both, 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 both songs of yours, are they not? Not fool on the hill, no. That was um, uh, Paul's song. The other one, that was mine. And you were mentioning that from an, an album that's coming out soon, you've got a song on uh, uh, yeah. Cousin to what you're talking Yeah, yeah, Here Comes the Moon. I thought, um, I mean, it was the circumstance I was in a particularly great place when I saw the moon coming up. And I thought, wow, you know, hey, all this and here comes the moon. And then I thought, no, I couldn't write a song called that. They would kill me. Brian Morrison, and that's your single release called Natalia. And Michael, I'll go to you first and get your reaction on your mm -hmm. Well, when I tell you about each record, I try to be as truthful as possible. Uh, and in each song, there's always something I like about each one. I love the, the melody of the rhythm track on that. Do, 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 do. And I do it out through the track. And it's pretty. Okay. George. Yeah, I agree. The backing sort of is okay. I think Van Morrison is a great singer, but the, yeah. the song I thought was a bit predictable. I want to talk about your, your forthcoming album, if I can, uh, George, because it's been a while since you recorded an album, and so I should ask you what you've been doing in the intervening period, uh, first in musical terms. Yeah, well, in music terms, I sort of skived for 1977. I went on strike. <laughs> At the end of 77, I thought, God, I better start doing something, you know. So I thought, well, maybe I'll write a tune, see if I can just write a tune. I wrote Blow Away. Where about was this? At home here in England. Oh, England? Yeah. Oh, I live here, yeah. I live here all the time. People seem to think I live in America. Yeah. I, yeah. I live here. <laughs> 
I think the first tune I wrote was 1963, when it was called Don't Bother Me. It's a grumpy song. <laughs> it actually was all right for the first tune, but, but then it was really a matter of practice. The more you do, the more easy it becomes, you know? Rock and roll, I would imagine, played an important part in your, in your early days. Yeah. What about you, Michael Jackson? How about the record or...? Rock and roll, generally speaking. Um, we spent Sunday weeks at Chet Berry and, um, Buddy Holly and Little Richard and all that. You recorded a song, Rock and Robin, but not, you've never really gone into a rock, recorded a rock and roll number, such as that Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, I knew I can do some years for it. I mean, it's kind of disco, but rock and roll, it's it's called kind of All Night Dancing. The new album, you're kind of pleased with, I would imagine, because you actually produced and, and wrote all the songs. This was the first yeah. song for you, wasn't it? Right. Why, why this album and, and not before? Because uh, it's kind of difficult to get people for, to believe in you, to, you know, you have to tell them, I could, you know, I want to do it for once. And, and some people believe in you, some don't, and find that you get a chance. And they see what you can do, and then they let you do it. So you're confident in, in just going on from here, I suppose? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if you guys always like your own stuff, I'm you know, from the beginning. Yeah, well, John and Paul wrote right from before we um, ever made. How did they write that? I don't know. They were clever little fellows. <laughs> <laughs> we did record, um, you know, the first two albums we recorded, about half of uh, the albums were other people's songs. Of, like we did Twist and Shout, The Eyes of the Brothers, Matt yeah. Box. Michael, you particularly um, sort of overcame the initial kind of teenage hysteria. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm grateful that uh, there's so many different things that I want to do, and uh, being able to do it is important. Good. Dave Edmonds, I like the record I won on the jukebox, by the way. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mark? Uh, I like the story. I do. It seems like, oh, uh, rock and roll, kind of. I mean, it reminds me of an old tune when it first kicked off, the, the style of the music. Dun, 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 dun. I was the story, though. The one you ended with, I'm nowhere. I know. Uh, he was saying he's AWOL on the jukebox, but it's not, it's nowhere on the charts. Which is, is a very really fun. Yeah, that's like a sort of country western type idea. Yeah. You know, that sort of... There is a certain amount of truth in that, of course, whereby the jukebox in America, they have their own charts, because jukeboxes, uh -huh. you know, you, you see songs in jukeboxes for years and years. covered the Commodore's record, a Bill Withers composition, which you, Michael Jackson, took into the charts here in 1972. So it'll be interesting to hear what your reaction is to that reggaeton version of, of the song. Um, it kind of turned out James was mentioning this too. It kind of turned into reggae in the middle of it. At first it wasn't. I, I mean, personally, I always liked the, I always liked the original version better than anyone. I mean, the one that Bill Withers did, I think it's the most special one of all. But uh, this one is nice. But I, I like the saxophone. I think the saxophone is good. Okay. What, what is the guy's name? I need my paper. Gene Lindsay. Gene Lindsay. I don't. I can't tell you much about him because I don't know much about him. It gets us actually into the field of reggae because I wanted to ask you both about your thoughts on reggae for the last couple of years. Uh, music critics in some areas have said, well, this will be the year of reggae. There'll be yeah. much more reggae-dominated music in the charts. I mean, it, it's meant a lot more in Britain through the years, I think, than America. Um, Art Molly was a big influence, especially in the States for reggae. Um, I think he didn't look, you know, he wrote I Shot the Shin. And then he wrote another version of it in reggae. And ever since then, I mean, they've been into it. With this Peter Tosh, yeah, yeah. he's seen that the Jimmy Jagger thing is, is happening in the States, too. Walked I on. like it. The first time I saw Bob Marley, I was so impressed with his band and the show, because apart from uh, the musical thing, I mean, it's sort of hypnotical. Um, apart from that, I just like the way he looked and the way he moved. He's sort of like, he's in a dream. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... It's, uh, well, like Lord Butty said, it's just like a jitterbug. It's so simple, it evades me. I'm going to play a couple of uh, tracks from a new Eddie Money album. George, you were saying that, that Money is 
perhaps not his... his oh, just name. a friend of mine told me he was called Eddie Mahoney, and uh, <laughs> they took out the H and called him Eddie Money, which is <laughs> it's a good name. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a better name, Money, Eddie Money. But um, it's not the sort of record, personally, that I would play over and over again. Uh, what about you, Michael? Okay, sorry, Mark. <laughs> exactly the same about yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Who, who do you like to listen to these days? Um... I like all kinds of music, but uh, as far as popular music, like you said, I like uh, Stevie Wonder. Who um, oh, incidentally has an album out here in a couple of weeks' time, really? which is to the oh, really? yeah, Secret Life Secret of Life Plants. Yeah. I heard some of that. It's so good. It's supposed to be very different from, yeah. from other things. But are you planning to do any tours to to kind of promote or play songs from the, the forthcoming album? I don't know. Um, I mean, at the moment, I don't have any sort of band. I don't really have uh, a plan to do that. I don't know. Maybe I maybe I will do that later. Also, I don't trust myself. You know, I'll party. <laughs> and like I did in the last tour, you know, I come off stage so wired up that I want to boo you all night long. And then I'm wiped out. Like, at the end of the first week, I'm ready to drop. <laughs> what about you, Michael? How do you avoid like, the kind of the pressure that must be socially on you when you come off stage. Let's go to a party or why don't you come and see me or this or that. I mean, what do you do? Do you keep a very strict discipline and you kind of go to bed at the end of each concert or what? That's it. I just go to sleep. Take a sleeping pill before the last <laughs> That's it. You said on Motown, Pops, we love you. Always as good as the lineup in tonight's round table, George Harrison and Michael Jackson. I mean, Michael, obviously, you know a lot about Motown records. Would they have all been in the studio together recording that time? Um, I don't think so. No. George? Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I think they they were there together. At least, I think, Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson were. Yeah. Because the way she come in with uh, singing Smokey a little bit, it just sort of... It would have been a bit hard doing that sort of thing yeah. and trying if they weren't all together. What, what, tell, tell me about the days with, with, with Motown. Uh, did you have other affectionate days that you remember Motown like it's by? Well, the only days in Motown are really, I mean, they kind of like classical days. Yeah. I mean, we were so young at the time. I remember everything. We first, we first performed for Barry Gordon in his biggest state in Detroit. The pool side, yeah. I mean, all the Motown stars were there. Was it an audition that you did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you're looking at all these great artists standing you down from the Pills to the Supremes, and, and uh, they loved that performance, and Diana came over special, I made mean, a special uh, thanks, and she congratulated us and told us she wanted to be a special part of our career. And of course she was. What songs were you doing? I mean, that interests me. Were you doing some old Motown hits, or did you have original things you were doing? We were doing for? some James Brown stuff, some old Motown hits. We were doing It's Your Thing by the Isley Brothers. How old would you have been then? Brown seven. Seven? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that, that it's Motown, you think of, of, as you said, a family thing, and that's a. Uh, you know, that all the artists knew each other really, really well. Was, was that the case then? I'm sure it too. But what happened? Because things obviously were not mm -hmm. so good, otherwise you, you would have left, presumably. You wouldn't have left. <laughs> right. Uh, I think it's a and I heard mean, deals and contracts and all that stuff. I mean, most artists do. But, um, like I said before, we always wanted to write our own material. We have our own publishing company. And, production company, different things like that, and we finally got a chance to do it. Uh, we never got that chance on more time to write our own songs, which we always wanted to do. Man for Band, Earth Band, and that was a Bob Dylan song called You, Angel, You. Michael, did that appeal to you at all, that uh, treatment of that song? I don't know if you're familiar with the original version, but... Could you ask George first while I think you want please? <laughs> George, yeah, well, you're a friend of Bob Dylan. Well, react to that. Yeah, I prefer Bob's version. I, to tell you the truth, I've no idea what, what's a hit and what isn't a hit these days. But, um, <laughs> but that, you know, that was quite pleasant. But uh, as I say, I prefer Bob Dylan's version. Nothing personal, Manfred. Okay. Uh, Michael? Uh... I, I could never fall asleep on it because it was so, you know, up and out. 
Okay. What is the name of the game? You angel, you. And the group? Manfred Man's Earth Band. I never knew that. Well, that's really nice as a songwriter if somebody else does the songs. But Bob, I think, is probably not impressed because it takes a lot to impress Bob Dylan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what about your, 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 your songs? Is there anybody that's recorded any one of your songs that you are particularly happy with the way they are? Uh, yeah, I've been a big fan for years of Smokey Robinson. He did um, something. Actually, when I was writing that song, I, in my mind, I was thinking of Ray Charles singing it. But when Ray Charles did it, I was really disappointed. Except for the middle, the bridge to it, he sings great, but it was a bit of a corny sort of way he did it. But James Brown, I did a real James Brown did it in 1972. I mean, it's just unbelievable, you know, the way he sings it. I know that. You know something? Oh, yeah. I know that. I'm so sorry, that's the last one of my favorite ones. I thought, uh, Lenny and McCartney did that. Everybody thinks so. They do, they do. I don't know you wrote that one. <laughs> Beautiful. And here, the Blues Brothers Soul Man. Yeah. Lucy is always, um, been quite famous for his impersonations of Joe Cocker. Yeah. And you uh, expressed a light when the, when the record first went on the turntable. Uh, did, did you enjoy that, that version of it? Yeah, I, I like it very much. I like the song. I think the song is so good. Uh, Sam and Dave did it first, I think. Uh, and I was reading the credits. I don't know. Isaac Hayes had anything to do with the writing. He's an English one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what they yeah, ordered. I was surprised. I think the song is great. But um, I don't really like the mix of it. I mean, oh, it's a live recording. Oh, it's, it's really live? Yeah. Ah. Oh. I mean, I'm not for life. I was just saying it because my favorite part is the guitar. And I didn't hear much of it. That was my only. Uh, what about those Stax records uh, of the late 60s? Uh, I mean, disco is very, very big today. For me and my heart, my favorite dance music will always be Sam and Dave, Eddie Floyd, Carla Thomas, Rufus Thomas, Otis Redding. Do they mean much to you? I always got the impression that, that Stax, as a sort of a label, was much bigger and better known in this country than really all over the entire U.S.? Uh, not really. Uh, mm. All those people you named are really great people to uh, America, too. Especially Rufus Thomas and Isaac Hayes and the Staples Singers. Uh, I think they're all great. A lot of things to ask you. Michael, I'm going to ask you about your motion picture at the Wiz after we hear something from Cat Stevens. Mm -hmm. Cat Stevens is uh, being a consistent... Uh, you know, a person that I've enjoyed. I uh, like that a lot. Michael? I feel about the same way. I've always liked his songs, like One is Broken and Moon Shadow. His voice is so, you get into it. It's, got, it's really dramatic, the sound of it. It's certainly an identifiable sound that he's, uh, yeah. that he's got. What about your movie then, uh, Michael? The Wiz, which American audiences have, have been seeing now for the past few months. It's, uh, out here very soon and to tell us a little about that film The Wiz it's, it's based on The Wizard of Oz is it not? Yes it's uh, taken from the play The Wiz um, we all filmed in New York six months half in the studio half on location it's um, it's from the book Alfred Baum and um, Dan Ross plays Dorothy I play the Scarecrow and Lips and Russell the Tin Man and it's more of an updated Wizard of Oz. I mean, like in the, the original one, like the fire monkeys are fire monkeys. Like our fire monkeys are hell's angels with big glasses and, and their bodies are made into the bikes. And so a bit of a comedy in the... In the yeah, it's coming in, it's, in the series and it follows more the original book with the, what L. Frank Baum was really trying to say. But he was trying to put across a message in the story. A lot of people call it a children's story. Yeah. But it's really heavy. It's a heavy thing. Can you simplify basically what your conception of that, that message well, is? Well, he was saying, uh, like, for instance, the scarecrow who's looking for a brain. Uh, he has all the brains in the world. He just doesn't have to believe in himself to realize it. He's looking for something he has already. And it's uh, many of the people today, genius, is walking around doing the same thing. They just don't have that belief in themselves. And that's what he was trying to say by using the scarecrow to men and lions. So he thought fable. You have to do people. Uh, he must have been a lot of work for you dressing up as a <laughs> scarecrow. Yes, three hours of makeup every day for six months. Just makeup. 
with the straw and all that. It must have been fairly warm and so yeah. on. <laughs> but you're obviously happy with the results. Yes. Yeah. All the probes seen the film, and of course the song we're familiar with, even down the road, which, which came from the whip. Michael, what about it to you? And what about your foot, actually? I'm going to be really young in the morning. I'm going to be really young in the morning.